Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. So I did do another movie review this week, but this time I saw a movie last week um, after we just signed up for our membership for the YMCA because now I'm joining in along with my sister Eileen. So that way, you know, during the summer we're going to be spending time, you know, doing all these fun activities, you know, doing some exercise going out swimming and going to the weight room or even the, taking all these other classes that we're going to no matter what we want but we'll still be able to relax and go out and do all this other stuff while on summer vacation so I mean it'll be the best way for us to lose weight faster. But anyway, uh, the movie I saw last week is, and I couldn't believe it, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty curious about checking this out. I mean, after seeing the trailer online, I shared it, and I was basically curious about it because, well, for one thing, it is Pokemon, and, and two, uh, Ryan Reynolds is providing the voice of Pikachu in detective form, but joins in with Justice Smith from Paper Towns and uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. If you remember that guy. Yeah. Now, just to give some brief history here, yes, Pokemon first started in Japan in 1995 which started out as video games and then before it and then later on we started getting the anime series the long running anime series as it follows ever since uh, it aired in 1997 in Japan but it came here in North America sometime either 97 or 98 but it did premiere in 1998 uh, in North America in syndication, which is called the Indigo League. And then, as it follows, we had the Johto Journeys, then we got Master Quest, and then we even have Pokemon Advance along with Advanced Challenge, Advanced Battle, and so on and so forth. <laughs> they still play it today, you know, hard to believe. But we also had the animated films uh, with Pokemon the first movie, which even has Pikachu's adventure as a short, and yeah, they had some other shorts too. And then we also got um, the other films to follow. Yeah, the second movie, yeah, Pokemon 2000. And Pokemon Free, and yeah, th those three of them alone were released by Warner Brothers, uh, part of Kids WB. Which at that time, you know, Pokemon was moved to Kids WB in 1999, as it continues to go on until 2006, I believe. Which they then moved it to Cartoon Network, as they continue to go on. Then they stopped. Yes, and they joined in with Nintendo, which Nintendo, along with Game Freak, and uh, Creatures, which they put together to be to form a company called simply the Pokemon Company. So, and yes, uh, Four Kids Entertainment, which is no longer around anymore, but they they were the ones um, who provided. Uh, the voice acting, the translation from Japan to English, and all of that. I mean, it just goes on and on just talking about it. But of course, we had all the the Pokemon, the, which stands for Pocket Monsters for, for short. And we got all these uh, monsters you had to collect through, through the Pokeballs you have. So that way you can catch them all. <laughs> With the adventures of 
of Ash Ketchum, who's a Pokemon master, joins in with his pet Pikachu that he found. We get to know each other, and it's been that way since. Joins in with his friends Misty and Brock, and then they start getting their own. They became Pokemon masters themselves. They join in with other characters like Doc Ock. There's Joy, um, that one cop that they had, all the others, you know, we, we get a lot of characters. And I know for series, as and then as for the other series out there, yes, um, well, we did add May and Max <laughs> for the Advance, along with Advance Challenge and Advance Battle. You know. so, I like those characters, too. Oh, but who couldn't forget uh, Team Rocket, you know, the villains of the series. Join in with Meowth. <laughs> Possibly, yeah, I mean, one of the only Pokemons that actually speaks, because the rest of the other Pokemons out there, you know, they just talk with their own names. You know, just like dogs and cats, you know, always saying wolf and and meow, you know, just communicating in that sort of way. Um, very cute. And then they go to all these stadium battles, you know, you know, so they can battle against the other you know, Pokemons out there. You know, they go for all these other adventures, all that other stuff. That sort of thing. And of course, you got Me Too that does speak also through the mind like the intelligent one. But then you also got the, the mind Pokemon that doesn't speak at all. It just does his mind. Uh, I mean, you can go on and on just talking about them. But I think you already know already. So, I wasn't a huge Pokemon fan, but that doesn't mean that I don't love them or like them either, because I actually do. I mean, I do watch the, the series. I mean, I, we started getting them on VHS for a while. I mean, we did watch it when they were on Kiss WB as well as syndication. Uh, we did add some of the video games. Um, of course, we even got the Super Smash Brothers <laughs> at the time. And I remember we had the Hey You Pikachu uh, game from Nintendo 64. And we used to like communicate with him and all that. <laughs> Get to do all this other stuff. Um, I think we did have some toys and stuff from Pokemon, but we never did collect all of them. But either way, you know, it's always cool. However, I am a fan of a very similar franchise that's just like Pokemon, which as you may know, short for Pocket Monsters. There's, um, well, for one thing, it had a better storyline. It had um, a lot of characters that we follow. Better character development right there. And we got a lot of monsters that speak, but they can also attack. And they can evolve, too. You know, through their devices that they got. And they come from a whole different world. You know what that is? Digimon. Digital Monsters. That's right. And that's the one I watched the most uh, when it was on Fox Kids. Uh, so I didn't... So I had watched Pokemon on Kids WB. As opposed to all the other shows. But I had watched Fox Kids more often. To watch that show. Along with all these other shows that follows. But at this rate, <laughs> I, I do watch Digimon a lot. And so I basically became a fan. Because uh, I did have the comic book. Um, I did have some toys. We did have the VHS tape. Um, but I did actually finally got the DVDs. And I even got a copy of the movies. So. 
That's always fun, and I know we just recently got Digimon Adventure Try, which has six movies so far. Um, I w I still need to get the rest of them though, so I can com so I can have the entire collection. I still need to get the third season on DVD along with the fourth season, and maybe I could find Data Squad, but. But of course, they're very expensive, but maybe if I could find a, a good price for it, it'd be nice. Because I only had the first two seasons on DVD separately when I got it for a lot cheaper. So, I was pretty lucky, but I still wish I had more. It's not easy, though, getting in all these shows on DVD or Blu-ray for that matter because of the prices. Or because, you know, I'm not getting much money at this point, but I'm trying to save up. Or also because I can't find them anywhere. <laughs> That's another problem. I mean, sometimes you probably just have to get it online to, to get the rest. And yeah, like going on Amazon or eBay to find them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, I know. That's that's my uh, big history here. So I'm, I'm going to start my review right now. It stars Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Deadpool himself, <laughs> of course, and a lot of movies that follow, before and after. <laughs> uh, Akul Atani, uh, the voice actress uh, behind the voice of Pikachu, so yes, she she comes back. She's the, the most long-running uh, voice actress to date. Justice Smith, as you may know from, you guessed it, Paper Towns in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. With Max uh, Fincham you know, portraying a younger version of himself. Catherine Newton, which you're not going to believe this, but she was previously in the movie Paranormal Activity 4. Yeah, definitely an awful sequel, one of the worst I've ever seen. And of course, she plays the annoying blonde teenager in that movie and but it, at least now she's better in this film that she's more highly intelligent and and cute and attractive I mean she's not a bad actress it's just she just played a bad role in Paranormal Activity 4 Bill Nighy has been known for uh, appearing in films like Love Actually as well as uh, Shaun of the Dead among others, I mean, he's, he's a British actor, had a long ahead of his career. Cam Watanabe, who we previously saw him in, in the two Godzilla films, and of course, Inception, among others. Chris Geard, Suki Waterhouse, Omar Shaparo, Rita Ora, yes, Rita Ora, the pop star. Who was in those? Who was in these awful Fifty Shades of Sh? Of, <laughs> okay, Fifty Shades of Grey films. I'm getting tired of that, those those freaking movies. Well, she basically plays um, a different character this time. Basically, uh, a scientist. Shosetti Simon. Kaldev Koran, Rena Ashibano, along with Kataro Watanabe, and Rachel Lillis, yeah, doing the voice of Jigglypuff. As you get all the rest of the Pokemons joining in, to cash in. Because after all, this is the first live action movie that we ever got. It's written by Dan Hernandez along with Benji Cement, Derek Connolly, and of course Rob Letterman, who's also the director of this movie. And yes, he previously directed uh, Goosebumps, the live action movie, with Jack Black, and he has done other stuff too. The movie begins in the Pokemon universe. We meet a 21-year-old insurance salesman named Tim Goodman, who's played by Justice Smith, who suddenly gave up 
Pokemon training after the death of his mom along with the absence of his father, Harry. He travels to Rhyme City, which is a metropolis that has both humans and Pokemons living together side by side as equals. But he's collecting Harry's access that follows a mysterious death in a car crash. Then he winds up inside his apartment where then he encounters, you wouldn't believe this, Pikachu. Now usually Pikachu does speak in his normal voice, you know, such as Pika Pika Pikachu. Yeah. But he does actually speak in a detective type voice, which happens to be voiced by none other than Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. So he started to sound a bit like Deadpool right there, <laughs> Way <Wade> Wilson. <laughs> Well, but Tim was the only one who gets to understand him. Maybe it was probably because of the R label purple gas that he accidentally sh uh, found and let it out, which causes the the ape palm monkeys. You know, those are the other Pokemon's out there to attack them. So Tim also had previously. Uh, witness uh, a female reporter named Lucy Stevens who's played by Catherine Newton yeah she's she's highly intelligent very smart tries to know what who t tries to find out the story about what's going on but she teams up with Psyduck a Pokemon who actually has the power which Apparently, he does get very nervous, and when he does get nervous, this is where he, he explodes, and this is where something goes completely wrong, but he does attack all the other Pokemons that chases after. Good uh, idea. So after being chased down by these Alpon monkeys, uh, they were taking shelter at a local cafe. We then learned that Pikachu had suffered from amnesia and Tim also found out that no one else can can actually uh, speak to Pikachu but him so we learned that um, we also learned that um, he was uh, Harry's uh, police partner they were investigating the case together when Harry suddenly disappeared so they found Lucy, which um, begins to report about the suspicion of Harry's death. Well, this is where they they went to Rhyme Wolf, and then later they interrogated uh, Mr. Mime. Yes, that's the the Pokemon that that doesn't speak but just goes around miming. So they go directly to an illegal fighting area for all the Pokemons that are being owned by Sebastian and he's played by Omar Shaparo so he actually demands a rematch uh, with Pikachu after the attack that happened with um, Charizard yeah, Charizard so what happened was Sebastian gave Charizard the the art gas that they previously found, but Tim actually attempts to save Pikachu you know, during the rematch, but Sebastian just handles the art gas completely and accidentally releases it throughout the entire stadium, causing a huge havoc. But then Sebastian tells uh, Tim where did he got the gas from, and he got it directly from the doctor. And so now he starts to confront with Police Lieutenant Adio Yoshida, who's played by Ken Watanabe. 
which talks about uh, which there might be a clue between Harry, which they have a suspicion that he might he might still be alive. I mean, maybe he's not really dead at all. And which that's going to continue to go on as it follows, because Tim, because then Tim and Pikachu joining in with uh, Lucy, which that's where we meet um, benefactor Howard Clifford, who's played by uh, Bill Nighy, who uh, joins in with his son Roger. Yeah, they're both the founder of Clifford Enterprises. And the son is played by Chris Gear. They're about to go straight to the uh, science. They're about to go straight to the lab, all the way just to find out what just happened over there with the release of of Mewtwo, who escaped and took it away by leaving Pikachu having amnesia. You know, during that car accident that happened. So it left some clues that Harry might be alive. But then that's where they're being attacked by the Greninjas. It chases them out of the building. That causes Side Dog to go completely nervous and just suddenly explodes by using his power, causing the entire mountain and the entire land to actually collide and, and just and starts to break apart like like it's an earthquake so they have to jump between one cliff after another and then they realize that that was actually the field of colossal Totera Pikachu was suddenly injured but at that point on he started to get powers again so he's starting to remember again. So he's starting to have uh, his memory back in a sort of way by trying to leave Tim all out of this. But Tim does manage to communicate with Bulbasaur and by taking Pikachu to the clearing in the forest, which they're being greeted by Me Too, and that's where everything happens, which will lead to what's going to happen next. Um, by the time uh, you know the Howards start to take over for especially when there's going to be a parade that's happening so for the Pokemons and everyone so it's going to lead to like a tragedy or or an attack that's going to happen uh, I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to give away too much of course, this is based on the video game that came out in 2016, which yeah, I never played it, because I hardly ever play video games these days, although I know, because I never have time, but I don't even have the game either, so I can't say. Um, also, yes, I mean, there are cliches in the movie that deals with, you know, the father and son relationship here and there, and you know, who's going to take over, or, or they just couldn't get along, and, and it leads to a twist that happens, I mean, that sort of thing. Um, that's pretty typical. If you think about it, and then yeah, and then all this other typical stuff here and there, but so I can live with it. You know, it's it's better than nothing, but hey, we, we seem worse. It's entertaining. Um, really did enjoy it. it. It's hilarious at times, and it's fun. I guess you could say this is sort of a a take on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which we lead to that too, because you know both films are are first. Yeah, both of these films are live action, filled with animation joining in uh, movies, but they also deal with detective stories too. You know, like 
Eddie Ballant. It was played by Bob Hoskins uh, trying to solve a case involving the murder of his brother by a tune that's unknown, but some might suspect that it might be Roger Rabbit, but it's in reality it's it's someone else that's committing the crime. So that sort of thing. But this was going for a different uh, adventure, but for for Pokemons out there. <laughs> I mean, yes, the plot is pretty standard. It is predictable at times and has a lot of cliches, but then again, you know, detective stories are like that anyway, because you never know what's going to happen next. I mean, there's, you know, they have to solve some clues, and, you know, we get to a twist that's going to happen, and so on and so forth. I mean, we've seen these before. But you know what? That's the whole point. <laughs> Uh, but I'll tell you this, though, I, I thought uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, really stole the show as Detective Pikachu. I mean, he, he provided the voice exactly what we expected, and and he does. He's the only one that, he's the only uh, smart Pikachu that he can understand through Tim. Because Tim apparently begins to uh, communicate you know, you can't communicate with all the other Pokemons out there, but whatever. And neither, neither did all the other humans would. But, of course, he has a personality. I mean, he, he, he talks the way he talks. He's, you know, he solves all the clues, trying to figure out all the stories here and there, trying to find out the, the mystery behind, you know, Harry. And of course, he loves to drink cappuccino. Yeah, because all detectives do. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's like high for that. But he's also very funny, too. He really is. Uh, Justice Smith, yeah, he's alright. Quite decent as uh, Tim Goodman. I mean, but he does tend to bring in some chemistry between Pikachu and Tim. Uh, Catherine Newton, on the other hand, um, surprisingly, th this has got to be her best performance. And you know what? This might as well just be her breakthrough role. Because she's, she's very uh, intelligent, uh, attractive, uh, quirky, but um, fun as Lucy Stevens. And it really shows. I mean, she plays exactly like what a reporter would be. Because she's the junior reporter of CN CNN, as they call it. Yeah, CMM. A, uh, a dip, yes, sort of a parody of Cable News Network, <laughs> but for uh, Rhyme City. Um, Bill Dahi was also good, I mean, for what he was given. Uh, along with Ken Watanabe, Chris Gear was, eh pretty so-so for me but well there's a secret behind that uh, Rita Ora mm, okay but as it appears I mean the, the characters were just fine um, but you do get to see all the Pokemons joining in I mean it was nice to see them all in CGI form and yes the CGI is incredibly stunning no doubt about it. it looks amazingly good even if you saw this in 3D too um, in fact <laughs> it might as well just be right up there with Alita Battle Angel I mean both films have stunningly awesome CGI effects that they use and it really shows um, but in the end um, I really enjoy the adventure that they went through, and it's definitely worth watching, even if you're not a Pokemon fan. I say give it a shot. But hey, even if you are, but if you are a true Pokemon fan, I know you're gonna love it, no matter what. 
I mean, it'll definitely be right up there with all the other anime movies and series, and, and you'll definitely love the video, you know, as well as all the video games and all this other stuff you collect, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, give it a shot. I mean, the budget's only 150 million, but surprisingly, it did so well at the box office, making only 421.3 million dollars. So, it's all up there on the screen. Anyway, so it has um, it has a nice soundtrack. Um, the The score was done by Henry Jackman. Um, the cinematography is done by John Mayerson along with uh, the editing done by Mark Singer and James Thomas. Some great direction, great writing here and there. So, there you go. So that's um, Pokemon Detective Pikachu, and I give it four stars. I'm Josephine Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.